Hi, I'm Namita Ramani, founder of Above Digital and your host for successful marketing for small businesses in Dubai. Welcome again and today I have a dear friend, my yoga teacher and a very enterprising entrepreneur, Manish Pole, who is a co-founder of Total Yoga. Manish studied BA in journalism, psychology and English literature and was working as a copywriter in an ad agency in 2001. Back then as a copywriter he was always struggling with deadlines and working really long hours to write ad copies. He figured that uh it was mainly due to lack of focus that he was not able to produce copies fast enough and he started looking for places to train the brain to focus when a friend suggested him to try yoga and meditation. Being born in a Christian family and following a western lifestyle and culture he was not very familiar with yoga philosophy. However, just the first yoga class itself blew him away. He knew he had experienced something powerful and decided to continue to attend classes and within a couple of weeks he started training to become a yoga teacher. It did not take him long time to realize that this is a lifelong study and will require his complete involvement and that's when he decided to let go his copywriting job and pursue meditation training full time. 20 years back the concept of making a living as a yoga teacher did not really exist and there were not many teacher training courses to learn meditation and yoga you had to go live with the guru in an ashram he thought of starting a, with a 3 month internship with his guru which lasted for almost 7 years with Bharat Thakur who is the founder of artistic yoga he says he was lucky to have the opportunity to live with his guru He believes the time spent with the yogi is invaluable and any amount of theoretical study or asana practice can't replicate the reality and deeper understanding of life which begin to manifest when you're observing and living a yogic life. He worked as a yoga teacher and COO for Bharat Thakur in 2003 to 2007 where he got an opportunity to teach yoga to India's most famous entertainers and business leaders and politicians like Anushka Shankar, Vinod Khanna and so many more. The next 3 years that is from 2007 to 2010 he moved to Dubai to open Bharat Thakur Artistic Yoga in Dubai and worked as a yoga teacher and CEO for him. That's when I met him as well. and he was my first yoga teacher when i started learning yoga back in 2008 in 2010 he decided to quit bharat thakur and moved to bangalore india with his ex wife and together they co-founded total yoga in pune total yoga now has centers in india singapore usa uk uae and new zealand and also offer teacher training courses teacher training courses Total Yoga also runs Yomaste Yoga retreats which are yoga inspired adventures to Himalayan destinations like Rishikesh, Ladakh, Nepal, Varanasi and in 2020 they plan to go international starting with Greece in pipeline. Anish, welcome. Thank you, thank you. And thank you so much for coming. I hope the introduction was uh yeah, fine. Usually when you introduce yourself it's much more fun to hear by the way. I wish I didn't say all of that. That's true. <laughs> and uh but anyways, I got the chance to introduce you, my yoga teacher. It has been it's such a pleasure to have you and little did I know back then in 2008 one day we'd be sitting like yeah, this. <laughs> absolutely. And talking. Absolutely. Your introduction by the way was one of the longest introductions I've ever <laughs> done for any guest. It's really bad for me because one works really hard in life. to have a really short introduction. Uh-huh. <laughs> Robert De Niro actor. Mm. Somebody else actor in this play in this season in this <laughs> so, Yeah. So even in my sort of uh, unsuccessful tenure this is as bad an intro as ever. Oh. <laughs> unsuccessful tenure. How humble. <laughs> How cool. Okay. <laughs> so um you want to share with us things we don't know sure. because there's lots of stuff about you online so you know be open be uh, authentic as much as you can share your journey and like i always share with my guests that the podca- the purpose of the podcast is to help other businesses learn from your journey so they can adapt a few things or from and learnings from your story sure. and apply to their businesses so it looks like yoga called upon you on this path as i can as we can understand from the story Bharat Thakur Artistic Yoga was one of the first chains to open back then in Dubai in 2007 and 8 right sure. So you were first actually working in an agency then you became a yoga teacher then you started working for him there in India then you came to Dubai to open the business for him They had just got open he was already running my my role was once I came in was to expand Okay So it was running for 3 years in a single center and then when I came in we expanded to more centers and that set the 
platform for expansion. Right. So you came. So when you were in India, you were just a yoga teacher, right? Yeah, and I was running our work for Delhi. So I was heading the Delhi team of uh, artistic yoga. Okay. So did you find it challenging to come up to come to Dubai and you know it's a different country, it's international market, it's a different market. And the culture unlike India where yoga where yoga comes from people really believe in the philosophy and in that time this was it was not a trend like it is a trend now. Sure. So what challenges did you face in promoting and opening so many because you did a great job. Sure. It's it's really spread everywhere when you were here, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh one was of course that Bharat himself being so enterprising and so well known it meant that and uh, his sort of acumen for marketing meant that we never had a problem getting in people mm-hmm. secondly uh yoga i mean at the end of the day it's uh, it's a universal subject so any and everybody is attracted and interested in the only thing that we found is that we would be very particular about not bringing too much of cultural context which meant that we'd ask our students if it's okay to do an om or so on and so forth that has changed so much in 10 years because dubai is much more open now back in the day it wasn't as open so that was the only sort of major challenge but apart from that uh, it was it, it was smooth sailing in fact we had a really good team and thanks to that team of five teachers who were spectacular at their work and we had a lot of mutual respect for neetu sumit sumit and natasha that meant that we could really do good work there was no friction there was no loss of energy in team management so that is very important what were your most important learnings of uh, growing that company here artistic yoga in dubai so a couple of things initially uh, uh so one of the things that i found is that my role also meant that i was had to do a lot of networking at that point artistic yoga was getting into varied businesses we were getting into film production mineral water clothes and so on back in india one of my roles was also to network here and meaning that we were looking for investors and so on and so forth so one of the first thing that we did is that we used to hang out a lot in the golf club and then we found that the arab investors they don't live in the golf club they live in the polo ground okay so, <laughs> that was good fun and uh, so you are learning polo i know but i used to go in a lot to the polo ground and so on and so forth I used to teach the Indian Consul General here, Mr. Venu Rajamani. He's now the ambassador in the Netherlands, and that meant that, and he was very particular that uh, the the sheikhs they sort of tried to do yoga because that would give uh, a deeper relationship between India and the UAE. So we would go in to meet all these sheikhs in Abu Dhabi and Ras Al Khaimah and so on and so forth. It was absolutely magnificent to see luxury at that scale. I remember very categorically that I had just read on BBC that uh, Porsche was releasing their first sedan the Panamera and half an hour later we had gone into uh, Sheikh Mohammed's place in Abu Dhabi mm-hmm. and uh, lo and behold the car was parked it was supposed to be released 3 days later but obviously there's a rich list where it goes and even before so it was very beautiful to see luxury at that scale and yet hospitality that was just uh, very different so my ideas of what constitutes super luxury uh was framed during those years and it was interesting because everything is inverse so if uh, 100 dollars is the price when it goes to super luxury you don't find anybody for 100 but if you make it 500 dollars everybody's interested yeah. so it, the whole economics inverses it was fascinating for me to study that so you uh, you you do you think it was the exposure was because of your connection like because it came you were tied up with Bharat Thakur and through him you had all these connections absolutely but we also worked very hard as a team we were very clear as to what where we had to be where we had to teach which are the places that we needed the connects and uh, as i said our team was fabulous so we were we, we exactly knew what we wanted to do and uh, That, that that was spectacular so we got the connects because we were already well researched as to who we should meet and so on and so forth so you did all that research who yes. should you meet and everything and Absolutely. how would you reach out to them and how would you make them to meet you yeah how exactly. would you do that so like for example we were teaching the at the indian consulate at the consul general so he hosted a session so we sort of invited bharat to come and give a talk and there he invited everybody who uh, was connected so sort of all the businessmen from uh, the mickey jagtiani is to uh, the sort of owners of uh, different publications and so on and so forth so they were all there and after that it was smooth sailing because we were teaching all of them mm. so you is your network got instantly built yes. with absolutely bare minimum effort would i say <laughs> should bare i say minimum effort yeah that's right but also the, the thing that really was interesting was that for us personally we were all interested in yoga yeah and so was bharat 
which meant that for us networking was not for any reason yeah we were teaching all these people but we were just having fun so they were very int- intrigued by the fact that uh, finally they're meeting somebody who doesn't really want anything yeah so people would tell me they, they would have conversations with us with me that uh, they couldn't talk normally to anybody else so for uh, for them we were that thing because we we really had no and we were hosting all of them at home and so on and so forth we had absolutely no uh, uh it was not the mind ticking that i need to get so networking doesn't work if you try to make it work right it's just you having fun and things flow yeah and that's the same thing even today yeah i was just talking to the uh, to the guest earlier was that um he doesn't like going for networking yeah, so do i i would never network. go for a networking gig because that's the most ridiculous place to meet a person uh everybody is on guard and uh, yeah. you know and everybody wants to sell themselves yeah. to you and they want you to know they don't right. they don't care what you do but they exactly. just want to let you know what they do exactly. how does that help i don't know it doesn't actually does does the, the only i mean true sales happen if you're not selling the the real art in life is how long can you hold on before you sell as <laughs> i i love that how long can you hold on before Correct. you sell Correct. how long should it be It until the other be- person asks you yeah, exactly 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 i mean what's the difference between a guy selling me something at the ad knock pump he's trying to sell me a sort of a card or a guy a guy in a tuxedo you know hosting a charity dinner at a five star place they're both selling but here i want to donate there i don't want that card so uh, if you don't sell you're a rarity and that's what people value yeah i love that I hope you guys stick to a note of this. I love like I want to sit and ponder on this now. <laughs> I love these things that I can hold on to them and then I go for long walks to sit and think about them. Why did you decide to leave artistic yoga in 2010? So I was about 29 and I said that uh, I love my teacher and we even now we meet and so on and so forth. But I wanted to do something on my own and I wanted to sort of uh, express myself entrepreneurially and that I felt it was a good time before I touched 30 I still had the energy the motivation to do the stuff and so I took that call. But you know you started yoga so early then which yeah. means you went to Bharat Thakur when you I were was teaching at early 22. 20s. At you 22. were teaching at 22. I was teaching at 22. Back then everybody in our classes used to be 40 and above. Yeah. In in India it was not trendy as you said. Yeah. I was like a son to everybody in my class but I was teaching from 22 so that gave me uh two two big benefits one i could grow i had enough time to sort of make my mistakes yeah and, that's very uh, early starting really very really early right right both my parents are professors were professors so teaching was something that uh, it's part of the genetics yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely is it that they are teaching subjects you're teaching yoga which is also so a we, subject actually it's a bigger because subject. my mom taught french my father taught english and i teach silence <laughs> 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 that is amazing. Uh, it's the most difficult actually. <laughs> Because people don't know how to be silent, right? Good. We all don't know. Absolutely. Struggle with that. What were the initial challenges in launching Total Yoga? Like Sure. So the first thing that uh was uh, since I left my teacher and we said we were very clear that we didn't want to set up in the same city that we had operated in because the natural tendency would be for some of the students to then gravitate towards our classes and that would create not animosity but some sort of ill i mean i mean just we didn't want that notion to be i didn't want it to be between my teacher and me uh so we went and set up in pune which was a city that we knew nothing about but because there was no artistic yoga there we said okay let's set up there uh and that's how our journey began Yeah, it would have been much easier to set up maybe in Dubai or in Bangalore that we were familiar with or Delhi where we taught before. So we said let's set up in Pune and we did phenomenally well. Uh, the biggest challenge we faced initially in Pune, so f- by then we had already been teaching for seven eight years, so we were good with our craft. We had honed the skills to teach, and it's getting better over the years, of course. Uh, the biggest challenge we found was that if we were living in Dubai for three years, the most creative people come in for yoga. India being India at that point in Pune Pune is legendary for yoga BKS Iyengar taught there for so an older population used to come in therefore we did a lot of work to ensure that the youngsters come in i remember sitting outside an editor's office in Pune mirror for 3 4 hours to meet this chap because i wanted a column in that newspaper as soon as i got that column 
the spread the word spread and uh, we were full by the time we were very clear that we wanted to be there for just a year and then go abroad again in which case it was singapore but uh, because we had that timeline and it told me we were very hard working by the time we left we had five studios and we were doing phenomenally well so you think uh, the articles or the column in uh, yeah, the course. mirror was the one which attracted the this is in which year we are talking we're about we're talking about 2010 okay so, so still print was very high in print was high uh, social media just about started but yeah facebook came but in 2007 but social media was very important for us because as a yoga school that was one month old because the content we were generating was brilliant we were able to punch above our weight so the democracy of social media was something very important for us now of course you need to put a lot of money in to get it out but back then your content was king it still is to a large extent yeah. and we were able to punch way above our weight we were able to compete with a school that was uh, 30 years old or so on and so forth interesting you know uh, you co-founded um, total yoga with your ex wife yeah um how was it how difficult was it and challenging or to main, to ma- maintain a balance between professional and personal because you are you guys are always together yeah. talking so, about the same thing doing the same thing right uh so we have zero balance we had zero balance and uh, that's the way we are we are all or none and uh, so it was great fun because uh, everything that we did was just an expression of who we were in terms of our sort of relationship together in terms of our work together and so on and so forth Uh, the friends that we made were like back in the day when we were friends right uh, it was through yoga we met so since we had this sort of we blur the lines between uh, work and non work i don't see that difference at all what i do for work is just an expression of uh, what i would anyway do so that blurring of the lines meant that uh, we were very welcoming people were always at our house and so on and so forth So it was absolutely no challenge Neetu and me were teaching for many years in fact she was teaching a little before me itself which meant that we had huge professional respect for each other and that simple usually um couples who work together yeah. so long for like they are everywhere together kind of Correct. creates a it creates a lot of um, Correct. challenges and we are naturally a little competitive with each other so that yeah. that spurred us on <laughs> <laughs> So if someone wants to open up a yoga center yeah what advice would you give them what should they do and not do you mean in Have dubai right that's the question we, we because we are locally sure. here yeah sure. or maybe you can share internationally as well yeah, yeah, basic principles are principles like principles. the first thing is that you have to be really good at your craft people are not coming for the decor they're not coming for the the way the place looks they are coming for the teacher yoga is one of the only subjects in the world where there is zero infrastructure required they're coming purely for knowledge there are very few industries in the world where i can choose to live in the biggest city of the world or i can choose to live in a small beach town people are coming just for knowledge they get their own mats they get everything on their own so you have to be that good firstly secondly uh, you have to be able to sort of serve so there are three fundamentals right one is that you have to have knowledge and you have to have respect for the science this is a 5000 it's the world's oldest tradition it predates indian dance it predates chinese dance it predates everything that's been ongoing secondly you got to know that this is service that if you're in it for the business you're going to close in a year the this is service you build a community you do stuff you have to sort of design your life in such a way that you're there to serve and uh, apart from that you have to have the sort of ability to create community to be part of community and these are these are the main things be more social yeah typically if you're a yoga person you will be cool with people you'll be comfortable with with people yeah right. what if the person doesn't want to teach himself then it's then it's a then business then you should not get into this because if you cannot teach you should not run a yoga institute that's my that was actually to my next how to make yoga profitable profitable business and yet maintain the authenticity authenticity of the yoga practice you know like sure. it's practice versus profits Sure. So, a you just deliver what you feel is the most true yoga practice that you can deliver, and then there there will be enough and more people who will see that and come for that. What comes out of profitability is secondary to that, but essentially, I am not a yoga entrepreneur first. I am a yogi first. I am interested. So, which means that I will never teach a class at seven in the morning, or sorry, not seven, but six in the morning. But that's my time. that's more pre- important for me 
than the business that I may. In India, 6 a.m. is is peak time for yoga. Hmm. So we will never ask any of our teachers to teach at that time because that's time for you, for your practice. So like that, you have to deliver the best yoga experience. The business will take care of itself. But uh, if you don't take it as a business, then and you don't think about pro- profitability, then yeah. how will it? Because if 6 a.m. is the most important time yeah. for people to come, yeah. but for you it's your me time, yeah. then how will the business run? It's fine. People will come at 7. Those people who value you will come when you're willing to teach. And uh, it's the one thing that is critical for me and the way we've set up our work, we don't treat anybody as a client. Now, you know this from your experience. You're not a client for me. You're a student. And we are friends. Which means that I will take the liberty to deliver class to you in the way that best suits me. In the same way, I will go out of my way to ensure that you're learning. Because you're a student to me, you're not a client. So you're not... Uh, whether you come or don't come, first of all, you have to design a business in such a way that ev- even if the person, even if, uh, even if it's threadbare, you're happy doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's almost as if the profitability is secondary. So this is very important between running a profit-focused business and a people-focused business. Yoga is people-focused. So any attempt to make it profitable will not work. Any attempt to make it an authentic yoga experience will only work. Yeah. You know, you have a very interesting business model. Yeah. Like you are across multiple locations in such, such short span of time. Yeah. Actually, it's not very short. You're like almost nine years now. But I've Ten. seen this business build up in front of my eyes. I yeah. remember the day when you launched Hotel Yoga. Sure. And I know both of you now and the way you guys are in so many different countries, right from sure. to Europe to I think in US. You are everywhere, basically. You're globally growing without having a single center across, outside India. Yeah. How did you make that happen? So very early, Hotel Yoga is a style of yoga. So you have the software. That's the style, the knowledge, and you have the hardware. The hardware is the studio. So very clearly, in fact, last year we gave up our own studio in India also. So you don't have any said, studio anymore? No, we, we, I don't want to be worried about the guy coming in and ensuring that it's cleaned or this or that or so on and so forth. I will outsource all of that. For me, essentially, the teacher comes in just for the knowledge. I don't need to worry about customizing how the studio space looks. Yes, I will teach in a beautiful space, but... Uh, I'm not going to be that's not my focus. If you're going to if uh, you're coming in you're coming in just for the knowledge. So I don't want that pressure for any of my teachers as well. So therefore it's just the software that we can then work on and there's no stress about us doing anything with hardware. That's the point. That's the So how did you get into these dip- how does it become beneficial or like profitable for a business to tie up with you then? Because now there are three shares. Okay. There's total yoga share, Manisha yeah. Neetu share, yeah. there's a teacher share and there's the center share. So whatever the cost of the classes, maybe 100 okay. dirhams or 75 dirhams, yeah. three people are taking a share in it. Okay. So typically uh, what happens is that uh, there's a percentage of revenue generated that's paid as rental to the studio. It tends to be about 30% and that's for the studio. The rest is then kept by Total Yoga and that's yeah. between teachers. And yeah. Interesting and so uh, fluid. Such a fluid model. Absolutely. Like it doesn't keep you space bound. You have absolutely Definitely nothing. Not. No rent to worry about. Definitely. So now teachers training, because you yeah. guys have you, and yeah. I think this is where it starts from, which is the teachers training, teachers because training. you have your own teachers. Pro- yes. And so you came up with your own teachers training Absolutely. program and you got it approved with the yoga, um, what is that website? Yoga Alliance. Alliance and everything. So it's such a big trend, yoga teachers training. Every Correct. second person is offering yoga teachers training, whether it's Rishikesh, Dubai, and everybody has their own models. Yes. And it's very difficult to have someone... choose Manish as a yoga teacher versus Correct. so you have to have a certain personality and certain uh, demeanor or so, certain kind of you know to kind of give my time first of all time most Correct. important and it, it's expensive to do teachers training yeah. most important is the time actually absolutely how did you create this uh, so that's it's actually two ways even me giving my time to the student I don't train everybody who comes away I'll, as uh, a teacher yeah yeah uh, everybody gets asana Very few people get yoga. Right? It's still very niche. So it requires a certain personality of person to even get the subject. So out of most people who come to train with us, I will recommend different places where they can train. Uh, for me, teacher training is not, 
even though it's the most profitable part of a business just on the on the excel sheets uh, it is too beautiful a subject to teach to a person who doesn't get it mm. yeah so i won't waste my time with that uh i will so why why does a person train with a particular teacher if they have see the way you view yoga if it matches the way i view yoga then you train with me yoga is pivoted on many factors some people are doing it for fitness some people are doing it for what it does to the mind some people are doing it for what it does to health if the way you have dreamt of yoga matches the way total yoga speaks about yoga for for us it's focus training and we'll use body breath mind so that you come into a state of focus if that appe- appeals to you then we are the right place there'll be people who come to us and that may not be their fundamental so we'll tell them you can train some place else because they won't get what they're looking for yoga is too vast a subject that nobody's going to offer it to everybody you have niches so we are so we differentiate we are very clear with the way we speak about yoga so on and so forth so that the right person picks that and they come so people who come to us have researched a lot they've tried different places and then they come to us and say that i like this about what you do and i'd like to train and then we'll ask them to come do a class sit with neetu or me have a conversation understand and only if you're sure please train because if you're not sure then it's a headache for you and it's a bigger headache for me so <laughs> <laughs> so uh see the these things like teacher training is too valuable there are a lot of work that we do in the corporate sector mm-hmm. so that's applied yoga So I can go into a corporate sector. I give a talk. I do mindfulness training. I do desktop yoga, and they pay very well. I don't need to make teacher training, which is the most beautiful part of the journey, into a profit metric. When I lived with my teacher, I never paid him anything. There's nothing for teacher Did training. Charge you anything? Zero. Okay. We'd get these calls from abroad and say, people say we'd like to train with him, and uh, after about five six years. but had set up a teacher training institute otherwise we were living with him now so we'd get these calls that people say how much is teacher training we'd say it's free what do you mean food is free stay is free teaching is free and you'll get a job so what is the catch there is no catch this is the way it's been done in india forever right so for us teacher training is not a profit metric yeah but it the people who i spend that time with i'm giving my time to that person right i'm sort of bearing my whole experience to that person out of the 10 people that we get uh if we get one person who gets the subject it's more than enough so that person will then do a lot of work mm. yeah. it's very slow process it's then slow of process. growth very slow process very slow after 10 years we have about 22 teachers working with us we've trained more than 100 but we don't work with all of them we work wow. with these 22 these people we feel get the sense of what we are offering and therefore we work I was sort of making my plans for the coming year and I said okay I would like to train 100 teachers in the coming year. And I said oh, not really. I have one teacher you know Samane. I said if I can train one more person like her I'd be fine. <laughs> That is my going to be my next question actually. How do you one like um like if you notice Bharat Thakur's all the teachers all the five teachers now have their own yoga centers. because i was there in the first uh, and i know all of them there's lifestyle yoga water all of them how do you retain the teachers to be part like you know like they are free spirited people and especially yoga people are like more of a yogi like all they have a different kind of a mind i guess how do you keep them intact and together working with you and keep them motivated so the first thing is that you don't try to keep them with you right you don't create anything that allows that forces a person to work with you you give everybody as much freedom these are all people who have run the people who work with me they had successful careers and they've given that up to be yoga teachers they can run business i don't need to worry about that my role with them so why is the teacher in auckland calling it total yoga yeah nobody knows total yoga there she can call it her own thing and do Correct. her gig she believes that there's still some stuff to learn from us a b the community of teachers that we have this 22 people motivates each other so she's part of that what like a sangha she believes these two things are valuable enough so she continues to call it total yoga in auckland yet i have not even visited her center and she's been running for a year and a half so and giving you your share yeah so uh, in fact with a person like her we don't even get into shares she can run it with the total yoga name i'm not even 
don't ask for anything. When I go there, I'll teach there and do workshops. So this is like family to us, and this is why we don't work with too many people. Now, why does she continue to do that? Because she feels these are the valuable things, and my role with her would just be to train her in yoga and yoga and yoga. Business, she's good enough to handle. That's the. That's the best. I think that's where the world is heading: community yeah, building. Yeah, absolutely. Completely decentralize everything. Yeah. Uh, to be to be really see at the end of the day to run a successful business as an entrepreneur you have to make yourself redundant correct <laughs> yeah so if somebody asks me anything when i was younger i would you know everything would funnel through me mm-hmm. then i realized that my own creation is making is trapping me yeah right? i wanted to be a free spirited guy now i am a bloody entrepreneur and i'm stuck in this how the hell do i then sort of completely ensure that i am redundant So if somebody were to ask me anything, I'd say, "Why don't you decide?" Because at the end of the day, you're going to teach there. It's your thing. Now we have obviously built a team with certain ethos over the years, and they understand everything that we stand for. So that's interesting. I love that entrepreneurship is self-employed initially Correct. because they are like you know, I don't know if you know the rich dad, poor dad score. Yeah. So it's um, your employee, Correct. then you are a self-employed. Being an entrepreneur is coming in the self-employed. You're basically Correct. employed for yourself. Exactly. And the sooner you move the right side, which is being an investor, a business Correct. owner, and an investor, business is when you're redundant. You're not sure. needed for the business anymore, exactly. and it runs without you. Exactly. That's when you become a true business owner. Exactly. So. Exactly. So the faster you make yourself redundant for your business, which yes. means the faster you let go all the hats that you're wearing, exactly. to other heads. The exactly. faster you become free, to that's true. And the the thing with in yoga is that essentially we are teachers and students. So our relationship, I'm a teacher to everybody who works with me, twenty two times. So is Neetu. Uh, so the only reason why they respect me perhaps is because I have a larger experience in the field and I know the subject more. Everything else in terms of business acumen, marketing, tuck 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 tuck. I think anybody can pick up. It is not essentially the reason why Total Yoga runs. Total Yoga runs because the yoga. That's why they work with me. That's the, to answer your question. How do you keep people? Because they want to learn from you. So the way to retain people is to be inspiring. Absolutely. If you're not inspiring, then you can retain the body, but you're never going to retain the person's heart. And that's even worse. To manage people who don't. think in the same direction is much worse so what do you do to be inspiring you see you have to be honest authentic you got to live your own life people have to see you as a person if you treat a person like an employee they'll be out of there in a flash or if they stay there they're not there mentally uh like what is this employee employee it doesn't exist right we are friends it so happens that we have certain structure for work to work else there's absolutely no differentiation Yeah. Uh I was trained in this when in the times that I lived with my teacher I might have been CEO of the company but we all teachers lived together. So the understanding of getting work done in the daytime and sitting and sort of watching TV on the same couch in the night time meant that you couldn't be a weirdo at work because you're anyway spending the rest of the evening with the same folks. So this was very important. Initially when you get a certain amount of power, a certain amount of response you become a manager. overnight you become a weirdo you start sort of micromanaging your friends and so on and so on. one person in the team has become the manager now he starts making it hell for everybody we all go through that and over the course of time you realize that essentially it's just a structure for a certain purpose work it's not really you're not any better than nobody it's just that roles so if you can understand the difference of roles so for total yoga i may have a little bit more of an idea on a particular subject so i will share that but apart from that uh we are fellow travelers very well very well put in i i totally believe that um these uh the hierarchy is actually separate people but yeah. it's at the end of the day we are all going towards the same goal which Correct. is growing a company and Correct. serving and absolutely and as long as everybody gets that and understands and you can't fake that you can't fake that uh, that you genuinely have concern for somebody Well, for example, you have a disagreement yeah. with a center or yeah. something, yeah. all over with a teacher, sure. and you lose the 
basically you, you lose the the center or something sure. how do you what happens to the students who have paid up for a particular sure so we always have teachers who can replace the teacher that's always that's, that's not a problem so you, but then you have only <coughs> handful of teachers you have 22 teachers all over the world correct so we've got enough and more to ensure that that doesn't happen there's always teachers who could sort of follow that so you're saying that if the teacher in uk says that we don't want to be a total yoga anymore mm-hmm. that's the question mm-hmm. that's fine the way i see it is that and this is genuine i'm not saying it because it sounds right if a teacher stays on with me it's a stress for me because i have to mentor that person all the time if the in in any which way if the teacher decides to leave i am the happiest to be very honest because uh i realized very early that my line my work as an entrepreneur is not dependent on anybody else's work or time and that's the beauty about yoga that i can go in and teach by myself anywhere in the world and it's not i'm not dependent on anybody else yeah so that's the way i run my business so if some teacher wants to leave uh it means that i have one person less to mentor it frees up mind space for me so i have absolutely no problems with that how do you make the business profitable then the business is profitable because if that person were to leave what am i losing the amount that i'm losing i'm getting that much more mind space i can put into more projects it doesn't uh, it's not dependent i don't run this uh, as a business where a teachers as everybody's paid very well and fairly as per their work right everybody can decide how many classes they want to do it's everything is very crystal clear if somebody doesn't want to take a particular class we'll close it because we are not here to sort of micromanage anybody anybody's life anybody's career so all our work is very organically designed somebody wants to set up with us now we're setting up in canada somebody wants to set up in canada we'll facilitate it for them we'll do everything if the person doesn't want to work it is fine because if the person decides to work then we have a responsibility and if they don't then it's up. it's even more fun because we can be friends so very early it took me a while initially but very early i realized that to be really truly free i have to be able to work like a freelancer in my own company hmm. <laughs> so which means that i have a certain amount of time i can give a certain amount of time to my own project as long as i think i own all of this i'm bound by all of this and i have to make plans and decisions so we've decentralized everything so if a particular teacher in my team doesn't want to teach in the mornings it's fine but uh, me trying to con- convince somebody is not on and i won't do it so that has made my team super motivated so like they are teaching much more than i would even sort of ask them to It's a very unique, interesting business model very you have. Unique. Absolutely different from most of the businesses yes. I've spoken to or yes. heard about. In the line of work that we have, we are basically teachers, right? So I can teach individually some place, and I can sort of make a living for myself. The reason I run Total Yoga is because there's this whole community of people, teachers, and their students, and all our students that our job is to mentor, hmm. not necessarily to sort of. the hours that person puts in i'm not sort of uh, trying to make my career my finances based on that person's hours that's the point so your finances your profit everything depends on your work on my what time what you do yeah exactly the, the all the different activities that yeah. you guys do in my mind absolutely we do make money from different centers if that were to go it doesn't matter at all because th- that's not critical interesting what marketing has worked the most even for artistic yoga when you were running then and now what marketing is working for you in guys in artistic yoga we used to do a lot of so that was 10 years ago right and so print was still very print, high print radio and so on and so forth we were just about getting into social media i had set up the social media sort of facebook page and so on i think it's about a, if i'm not mistaken about a million plus people on that page currently Achoo. i I, yeah. i haven't checked i don't know but uh, for total yoga we do a lot of social media so our content goes out and so on and so forth about uh, content in the form of videos videos uh, training posts. videos you sharing all the yeah exactly uh, talks about what yoga is and sort of posts and stuff about 3 4 years ago i was talking at uh, the social media week 
So I was attending one of the other person's speech also. And he was saying how sort of uh, Zara is the world's largest retailer, clothes retailer, and they don't advertise. As opposed to Calvin Klein that spends a bomb and there's no comparison even between a Calvin Klein and a Zara. So he was, he was sort of sharing how uh, the more you try and market, it, it implies that the product's not working. The first five iPhones, they didn't have to advertise. From iPhone 6, it was so bad. For other, it's not as good as the others that they had to advertise. So people obviously sense, they know that uh, trying to push it down their throat is obviously not a good thing. So <laughs> You are kind of shaking my business model now. <laughs> So yeah, mar- but, uh, digital marketing is what we do. And correct. if you don't do marketing, you don't come in front of people, how would they know you exist? Correct. So we over the last three, four years, so about three, four years ago, cold turkey, we stopped advertising. And we said, once I attended that, we just stopped advertising and we said, we'll just rely on content. Initially, we took a little bit of a hit. But now we are beginning to see that the more times that we try and advertise, so on and so forth, we get a lot of engagement, but it doesn't convert. So in the line of work that I'm in, it has to be natural content and people have to see an authentic voice year in and year out, year in and year out. A little bit of a boost of a post might take it to a few more people, but they're not going to convert. So that, that's... So what's the vision for Total Yoga? Uh, from next year, in fact, uh, I'm trying to see how I can sort of free up more of my time so that I can do a lot more travel and... Uh, so on and so forth. We finished 10 years next year and we've been working from the beginning of this year to put Total Yoga almost on autopilot. Uh, we've had deep discussions with the team and so on and so forth and see whether this can go completely on autopilot. So if I were to sort of travel for three, four months and have no engagement with our teams, would it run? And it seems that it will definitely run. That's amazing. That's a good, great achievement, actually, to be absolutely. almost becoming redundant now. Yeah, so if money doesn't exist, Total Yoga exists. Yes. And uh, we've had sort of deep discussions and we've asked people, do you want to sort of, you've got your center, you've got your students, do you want to go on your own? Do you want to continue with Total Yoga? What would you like to do uh, if we are not there? And so on. And everybody wants to continue because the community is so well knit. Mm. And we do a lot of work and a lot of internal training just for the teachers. And that is very strong. So I said, how do we sort of uh, ensure that this goes on? How do we sort of take a yoga experience and have fun with it and uh, see whether this grows and expands? So it'll be fun in the coming years. Uh, I get a chance to work from outside of Total Yoga. Uh, I've been in it. It's been a tunnel vision for 10 years. So now I can actually see it from the outside and continue to contribute and continue to lead some of the programs, the teacher training courses and so on and so forth without having to handle the logistics on a regular basis. Okay. That's been our challenge. So almost everything is now But automated. somebody has to handle it. So we have different people handling different sections. But so, so you have your high, these are your employees? Yeah, or these are they work with full us. Full time? They work full time with us. So they teach. So we have a unique model where we don't hire non-teaching staff. So, so everybody has to teach. Yes. Which means that the person who handles accounts was anyway doing accounts in the past. She is good at it. She's in the teacher now. So she'll do those two roles. Uh, we've in the past tried to have sort of people help us with marketing, but we found that uh, they fudge what is done in a different part of the world and so on and so forth. So the person who does the blogs has homegrown and uh, she handles blogs brilliantly now, but she's a teacher. So we felt that it shouldn't be that people are teaching, making money, and then we are paying another person for another professional work. It should be, so there's an additional income going to the teacher itself for the role of accounts. The additional work, yeah. You know, uh, recently, actually Artistic Yoga itself has uh, announced this new package. And this is actually talk of the town. A sure. couple of centers are talking about it. Sure. Like for 500 dirhams, you get a year's membership plus Correct. six months extra, which means you pay 500 dirhams for 1.5 years of... Correct. And you have unlimited classes, whatever, how much... How, how is this model? Like, it's a very... Um, it kind of it shakes the okay. the you know kind of the whole ecosystem ecosystem of Absolutely. the yoga and then it kind of doubts the students like okay if this person is offering yoga for so cheap why Correct. should I pay hundred bucks to urban yoga or whichever other exactly. center and exactly how does a position ben- how does a business position themselves and competition is doing so much so uh, the interesting thing is that when I was here in two thousand ten 
we were charging about 650 for a month for artistic mm. yoga classes yeah. and now as you say it's 500 for 18 months correct over 3 4 years ago i was chatting with bharat and uh, he was telling me that i'm going to make it one drama class that's my vision that any and everybody should be able to do yoga it's not just for the privileged anybody should be able to do and he's almost there right i think it's under one dharma this rate yeah so uh, that's just a different sort of approach and so on and so forth uh, now there are niche there are different things so some people uh, expect something from a yoga class some they expect something else from a yoga class so those who want to sort of work with uh, the artistic yoga model will go and attend there there will still be people who will go and attend somewhere else there's a mercedes there's a toyota everywhere in the world in every industry in the world so it just depends on how you want to sort of there's a, there's a niche for, but every industry around the world i i see that only the super luxury works or the threadbare one of the two there's no space for the middle segment right so either in, in the fitness industry either you're a super luxury space where people are coming to network or you're in it for the work only any and everything frills you know the those things drop away so you think so yeah the other in the, the other school that's doing is going to do very well here is cult so cult fit is uh, now got six centers i'm curating some stuff for them in the coming week they'll have about 40 centers by the end of next year so th- these so are models are they? they are the luxury no 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 it, they are basic the work is brilliant and so, so there there will always be niches yoga is too vast a subject Yeah. So somebody wants to do ashtanga, somebody wants to do ayanga, somebody wants to do this. That is one of my questions actually. There's so many forms of yoga. What yeah. is the right what should one practice? I mean there's never been a time in the history of yoga where everything was the same. Even 2000 years ago what was happening in Nepal was different from what is happening in Uttarakhand, what is happening in different parts. So this this uniformity doesn't need to be. Now the kind of yoga that you like may not be the same that Lewis likes and so on and so forth. you do what suits you essentially the only varieties that we find are in the way the asanas are sequenced nobody's created any new breathing techniques for the last 500 years so the only difference is getting to base camp after that it's a, the journey 2000 years ago is still the same yeah it's just that i want to do this asana before this or this before this i want to do it with a rope what is the right it. anything i mean it, it just it, there's they, nothing right or wrong in it it's okay to sequence asanas the way everybody chooses to sequence not them no everybody chooses you have to work with a person who has understood the subject for many years and then they are sequencing it for you right or you follow an established system so you trust the fact that patabi joyce has created an ashtanga yoga system after years of research ayengar has done it after years of research so that you don't just funkify it just for the sake of it yeah now I just want to be a little creative so let me do something that's but a person who knows the subject has been teaching say for 15 years now if the person wants to play that's creativity but without having the base without having the discipline you can't play with people's bodies minds mm, something like what you guys have created with totally yoga yeah. you have a particular sequence yeah, style yeah particular like. style that's a lot of research has gone into that and the fact that we've been doing this for many many years What what is your take on this? Um, people giving um, new names to yoga, like for example, um, power yoga and power. There's nothing called power yoga. These are the well, centers who come up with this name. Sure. So the point is that, uh, see, essentially we are talking about asana. We're not necessarily talking about yoga as an entire science. Okay. Uh, even if you have like a traditional school of an ayengar yoga the class doesn't have any pranayama meditation unless it's an advanced class or so on and so forth now which means that it when you say power yoga what what is it is basically when an ashtanga class was taught or a vinyasa class was taught in america there were it was also taught in a gym which meant that the people coming the audience was interested in what it does for my body so if i make it a little bit more dynamic then i called it power yoga It's not that it exists or doesn't exist. That's not the point. The point is the audience. Yeah. So it's not about the teacher so much as the teacher creating a solution for the audience. So two thousand years ago, thousand years ago, hundred years ago, if you wanted to learn yoga, you'd have to go to the Himalayas. You'd have to find a guru, and you were training to just sit still and meditate. About seventy, eighty years ago, as Krishnamacharya started to introduce yoga for health. and i got took that forward you could start doing it for health now 
your diabetes you do it so on and so forth so it, a whole vast audience from those people for spirituality now you have people even for health about 30 years ago it started to be used for fitness so now the whole world can do this we are talking about asana yeah so that you got to understand what is your take and uh, what is it that you want from the subject for me for example as you said i wanted to improve my focus so i teach it like that for me the focus is critical i'm not really that's why really your classes are centered to focus focus so, you still looking for focus after 20 years yeah. absolutely that's the only interest in me in this for me in this subject uh i've never had a problem with flexibility i'm not really interested in sort of doing any posture or i'm not i'm not training in any of that i'm just training focus so i teach it like that also so how a teacher gets into the subject will define how they teach the subject somebody got into it because they had arthritis and wanted to improve they will have a huge focus on therapy yeah like that have you got the focus now i'm yeah. still searching i have the focus i have <laughs> immense focus they say yoga is is um is a asana practice is the the goal for that is to sit in meditation yeah oh how long the word you? asan means seat mm. so yeah. so it helps the the reason you do asanas is so that you can, you can sit, sit for long hours and meditation in in uh, yeah. what is that so we it's interesting because in yoga we don't have a theory of meditation it's strange to say this that meditation is not considered something different now if you and me can focus or we can focus on the painting for the next one hour we call that as concentration the dharan i can retain dharan i can retain that for one hour if you can retain it for 3 4 5 hours it's called meditation is it so yeah. more than 1 yeah. hour 3 hours in the minimum i'm just giving a figure okay. in in the range of 3 4 okay. hours yeah? what so what is the distinction between these two states it's quantitative hmm. it's not qualitative it's measure yeah, yeah it's numbers now this goes on for 3 4 days we call it samadhi so the difference is just in those three states after pranayam after thing those three states it's a quantitative difference yeah in in, in very in very simple terms if you could focus on painting and but you're losing your focus every one minute you're thinking of something or something you'd be painting walls in a house if you could stay on your subject for say 5 minutes you're good enough to be in a gallery if you can stay on your subject for 5 6 hours you'll be a michelangelo in any aspect of life whether it's football the difference between that guy and messi is the fact that for 6 hours he can concentrate on his art so focus in any aspect of life what you're training is focus so yoga uh, gets straight to the bottom of the issue what do i need to be a better listener to be a better friend to be a better spouse i just need better focus yeah. the problem today is that people don't have the focus they cannot listen somebody is coming to talk to you you, you you're so distracted you cannot listen therefore with the subject of yoga you're just training focus that is actually one of my uh, actually questions that uh, life has become so fast these days everybody feels 24 hours are not enough and uh everybody is either in their phones or they are angry or they are short tempered or they are running or they are anxious or unhappy what is happening to our world and what would save us i think meditation is the only thing that can save the world that's true from becoming maniacs <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what else to call it it's very interesting because people say that the you know world's going faster the world's not going faster we are going faster yeah we are going faster which simply means that the thoughts are going faster that's all it comes down to right in one minute so now it, yoga is very interesting because in yoga we said that the rate of thinking is dependent on the rate of breath yeah, so yoga fundamentally works with breath it works with prana but to break it down it works with breath in a very simple way if i slow down my breath i slow down my time i slow down my thoughts if i slow down my thoughts i'm a master of my time if i have no control on my thoughts that means fundamentally i have no control on my breath then i feel rushed okay. uh the only difference that social media has done today is social media is not at fault those days when you had to wait for the bus you had nothing to do but to stare yeah but it was not that the guy was not compulsive now the same starer has the phone to chik 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 he just has basically we removed every opportunity to get bored that's the very important it's, and it's so important to get bored because yeah. that's where it, the, the creativity comes from yeah. the ideas come from boredom yeah 
So space. Yeah, space is gone. So if you have, if you have the ability to slow down your breathing, you will slow down your thinking. You will always have time. So if you want more time, you have to slow down the breathing and thus slow down the thinking. <laughs> That's the the easiest way to put it in, I guess. Then. But it's very tough to do. Very tough to do. It's not about me just slowing down my breath. For my breathing to be slow, my body has to be very fit. Slow breathing doesn't happen to an unfit body. Now, suppose I have some psychosis, some problems. I'm jealous of somebody. See, I'm jealous of you. Now, I may have the time, but the mind's running too fast. So I've not resolved these issues. If I have problems, if I have sort of. Uh, ungratified sexual issues or this or that i may have time i may have the whole weekend but i don't know how to utilize my time i don't know what my sort of what i what i can and cannot do so once those issues drop away then you have all the time in the world you'll never be rushed that is such a amazing thing you said a fit you cannot slow down your breathing if you're not fit absolutely so that's why yoga is interested in finding out who i am but it'll spend years training my body We don't have this distinction. Am I training the body? Am I training the mind? We don't treat it differently. If I have to sort of uh, figure out who I am, my nervous system has to figure it out. So my nervous system can be trained with my spine, with my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. The more I'm talking to you, the more I want to go back to Ashtanga now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been re-contemplating. I st- I started doing it, then I stopped. I found Only it monotonous. You've got to add pranayam to it. You've got to add meditation to it. Ashtanga is designed is the first system in the world that's designed for fitness. Because for the first time Patabi Joyce had young boys who he could train. It's the first system designed for fitness. So you got to add those elements also to it. So how does one I'm kind of opening up the sub I'm kind of moving a little away from the talks about yoga. How does one run a green business like a more Sure. Like in our line of work we basically with yoga you're not sort of uh, there's no electricity yeah correct there no. there's no treadmills and so on and so forth mm. people are getting fit by just doing stuff on their mat you might have a little bit of the acs and so on in my own studio in india we would never i've never on the ac uh, because I, i people have to sweat yeah so you sort of and keep the lights minimal and so on and so forth so that you're not wasting Uh, thing initially itself we ensure that there's no paper thing we don't do anything to do with paper much it's all done online and we you know the projects that we take up none of them are going to be wasteful so we're very mindful of sort of environment and uh, we run all our programs like that which means that if you're doing a big gig we won't invest in a even if the corporate sort of tells us please have a big backdrop and all that we'll say no you're it's a it's a huge thing that's going to be dumped after the event mm. so we we'll ensure that designs and all are so on and so forth that nothing's wasted i think it's becoming more and more important these days absolutely. by the day to be more sustainable to think about the planet absolutely and not just to indulge just because you can correct so true i was just um, you know i had an interesting insight this morning when i went for my walk and especially when i have these podcast shoot days i walk for longer time so i can be by myself longer correct. and have you know, kind of have that open space in the mind and i was just crossing uh the hotel where i saw this big structure there was this one hotel on the path to go to the canal and yeah. there's this big structure of trees the wood one the yeah. wood one i just saw it and i, I was like oh, hell. it's it first it looked pretty mm. then i saw shit this is pieces of wood cut into and created It's and pointless. then i saw you know what i saw imagine a human body species are cut and created in a structure what have we do like to create we cut we so many trees must have must have been cut for that correct, structure correct, correct. absolutely and i immediately started feeling sad and and that that view or that structure which for 5 minutes ago was pretty mm. now suddenly become Grotesque. ugly to me because correct. i'm seeing all humans cut and correct. structured so i genuinely felt really really sad and this realization i wouldn't and that struck i'm living in this area for 10 years correct, correct. strangely is the this. same structure i saw in the i think what the hell is this Exactly, and the uh, first time I felt this, and you know why this feeling has come, the more time that I'm sitting into meditation, that I'm I'm into vipassana and stuff, so the more time I start doing meditation, and the more walking I do, the more I'm going in nature, 
and looking at trees like i when i look at the trees they are all tied up with these mm. ropes i was like imagine a human being is tied up with the ropes and with the lights emitting from them how sad like mm. what are we doing to entertain ourselves and yeah. what are we doing we're torturing these poor trees who are what giving so much by for our sight and for some pleasure absolutely that's one of the things the other thing is that you're really it's really sad for the human beings who have to look at this that you're telling your children that this is art right? the poor chap grows up seeing that and says oh, this is art by the time he figures out what is art it's a bit too late exactly and all these realizations until now i never felt this and yeah. all this has only come because of the time i started spending so much alone i think it's so 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 very important to spend this me time to connect with yourself because only when you start loving yourself you start loving everything around you uh whether it's humans animals and uh trees plants everything becomes sure. suddenly you see everything in a different light absolutely. you know absolutely um to not be wasteful you know yeah when i talk to my nephew right i said he'll weigh something and he'll say so what i can buy it so it doesn't matter whether you can buy it or no the point is that 30 years from now your money won't mean anything because there won't be water okay. uh it's only valuable now because you think you can buy it <laughs> how does one's understanding of economics i remember we were having this yeah. chat over breakfast the other okay. day how does one's understanding of economics reflect in the way they do business so fundamentally what do you want your world to look like right are you happy with the capitalist view of life are you happy with the socialist view of life uh, so none of the none of the views of life are completely fine right uh, capitalism you're trying to get the maximum profit all the time uh, but at the same time it values hard work and talent socialism sometimes hard work talent but then you're constrained and you have to do for the like communism is a st- sort of extreme of that and that failed because a really talented person has to pay for everybody else in a way so you got to find out what you're comfortable with and obviously you're going to then run your business based on those principles so uh, a by and large for me per se uh, i probably have more sort of socialist tendencies but not in a way that uh, is structured and and i'm not a complete socialist in that sense but because profit is not all for me then i design my business like that which means that uh, my teachers my team has to be happy quality of life is more important i will not follow any market trends i will not do anything just because it will bring me a bigger buck i will not change what i think is valuable so your understanding of economics will define how you run your business that's very critical but if you have a uh, big goals like for example you want to so have big a big is big is defined like impact or Money. profit yeah right now some of the people creating the biggest impact in the world are not really the richest people right for example anybody people in the social space social like when you see a guy doing social work you yeah. doff your hat because you know that that person has done something very beautiful right he may not have the most uh, wealth in that particular thing but you don't doff your hat necessarily to everybody who's got wealth but you'll do it to the guy who's given his time so social work appeals to a human being in a very deep level uh so those goals you define for yourself for your for your industry whether you want to have impact whether you want to have success that's monetary whether you want to have success that's impact uh fame all of that so because totally yoga doesn't follow any market trends totally yeah. also yoga is also growing on a very slow rate yeah so i wouldn't consider it slow because we are in five continents or four continents right so for me that's not slow uh i'm i should read sure, sure. it's, it's not fine. about slow uh i mean if you don't follow the market trends then how so what are the market trends like for example acro yoga is a very funky thing to do if i teach acro yoga with neetu we fill up classes so on and so forth i personally have no interest in it i don't want to sort of sell it to anybody as a sort of yoga practice so i won't even bother with it that's my personal thing there are people who see it very differently who do it very beautifully so i will not do anything just because it it's trending yeah 
because by tomorrow uh, if you're following every trend you don't know who you are at the end of it so uh so we are a school we're not a business in when you were studying geometry in fourth standard if there was a trend and you went and told your teacher listen i want to learn that teacher would have told you listen i know geometry i know what you need to know by the time you're 15 let me handle this so we are a school so what advice would you give to other businesses who are not yoga schools who have proper business to run they have rents to pay they have salaries to pay because everybody Even can't we have, have the yoga pay. we have salaries to pay but you're still you have, have kind of fluided the system yeah you don't have a center now so you don't have rents anymore right but we are paying rents to all these places right wherever we were that's coming from the share that the student is paying so there's not particularly a fixed monthly rent sure. but normally businesses like i have a rent yeah. to pay i have salaries to pay i right. have license expenses unlike right. you know you don't have license expenses you don't have no, local we have in fees. india yeah we have established businesses and okay so we run two different companies yeah. but the, sure. probably you are you have really worked your way We've out to minimize the overheads are minimized yeah absolutely but a business like mine for example cannot go that that way probably sure. yet or maybe i have not have not figured out now sure. the way exactly exactly so uh what advice would you give to a business like us to to kind of uh how does a business like us um benefit from a like i don't know learn from this fluid concept or apply some of your learnings in our business or these so the first thing that you got to figure out is that what kind of a space you need for the office Right. I always wanted to have a beautiful studio. I had the most beautiful studio possible, glass all over. Yeah. It was spectacular for four years. I had it, and then I said, "Okay, I'm done." But the model that is essential for me—I don't want to be working for my landlord. Mm. I want to be working for my students. Now, because I have to pay a high rental, I'm not going to run classes in the afternoon because I want to maximize even the afternoon. I don't think anybody should be doing yoga in the afternoon. That's my mm. view. So. From the beginning, we were very clear that we won't do anything just so that we can make more money or pay more rent, or so on and so forth. Uh, a bu- an office doesn't need to be on the high street. Yeah? No client is getting is taking on business because of how the office looks. If they are, they're, they're the wrong kind of client. Mm. Yeah? Uh, the whole you see back in the day when I used to live here. I ensure that I was sort of uh, well presented and tak 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 and be at the right places and so on but essentially your work speaks for yourself for itself yeah uh it doesn't matter nothing else matters apart from conviction so you have to ensure that you reduce any business has to reduce overheads uh, uh in terms of rental uh, there are so many ways in which one could work out a home Therefore, you don't have the pressure, and your team doesn't feel the pressure to earn just to pay the landlord, for example, or to pay things that are not coming back to the people. Right? Uh, that's that's you remove anything that doesn't benefit the team, and back to the students, back to the clients. Now you you have to charge a client more because you have to pay certain other things. uh maybe not necessary interesting um it may not apply to every business i'm saying there are certain businesses that work on uh guests has to be in a certain magazine they have to be in those ads so so that or at least they think they have to be yeah zara has shown that they don't have to be so yeah. you, it depends in my line of work and this is the decision i have taken that there should be i shouldn't have to do any project that i don't care for and in my entire career i can say this very relaxed very happily that i've never even taught one hour in a project that i don't care for which means that if i want to be so independent minded and not buck any you know not have to please anybody then i have to be very sharp about how i spend what i'm earning if i want to take time off and not want to teach i should be able to do it the only reason sometimes one has to work is because there are overheads to be paid I, and that for me is death right that somebody has to do work not because they like it but because some bills have to be paid so that is a bit off for me and i've designed my entire life designed my business to ensure that that is never the case 
it's very commendable by the way what <laughs> you created for yourself That's and good. i'm so proud of you and like you rightly said like uh i'm sorry i said that you know your maybe i didn't no, put the question no, in a right way it's no, just it's that fine, it's fine i'm fact, sure we can go faster <laughs> but it's just, it's just that uh, i'm a bit you of a chiller you already are going faster <laughs> you like you rightly said you are in six countries which otherwise which other center do i know okay. who has a real center I actually rethought about this Got while it. you were talking i'm like this Got is true manish is growing actually faster than any other Actually. business i know kind yeah. of uh, the only last business was artistic yoga yeah. that was also growing which was again headed under with you like okay. you know so you were part of it as well what is yogi's take on business coaching okay <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing that uh, business cannot be differentiated from life right if you're a weirdo in life you're going to run a weird business <laughs> right you cannot change a person's business principles without talking about life principles the way you run your business will reflect how you are if it's a messed up business it simply means you're a messed up person if it's a simple sorted out thing it means that you have a simple sorted out mind your team has a simple sorted out mind so this is just a way to express now if you remove the distinction between the two right first of all uh you have to remove the difference between commerce and soul and see where they come together to some extent that's about it but when you're indulging in a business it has to be done for that purpose itself right if my business is to teach i have to teach the maximum number i can teach and digital marketing and so on and so forth the problem starts when either you confuse the two right uh, some of the biggest spiritual organizations i've worked with have the worst sort of business principles they expect everything for free whilst they are earning multi billions right so that's a wrong understanding of commerce and soul what is commerce is commerce and what is apart from commerce you cannot get soul into everything right? there's no need to such an amazing thing you said your business is a reflection of you Complete. basically it's who you are Complete. is the way you run your business your exactly. weirdo you are will run a weird business exactly and uh, if you have a business where nobody stays with you the team keeps going leaving you which means something is wrong something with is wrong. you correct or the or your clients don't stay with you yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> how profitable are yoga retreats by the way you do your master yoga retreats yeah. how how good are they for the business and why did you start that sure so every single project that we do is just for the adventure of it So we love travel. Neetu and me love travel. So we will then lead a retreat there. We'll go to Ladakh and so on and so forth. Uh, it's completely for the love for the adventure. So thankfully, Neetu is like me in that sense. Uh, we are both completely in it for the adventure. Yoga retreats were super profitable about five six years ago. Now, since it's become completely a saturated market, it's not as profitable as it used to be. So we have to keep differentiating, keep doing unique things. that you like to do and you'll find enough people who follow that trend you know you were uh, also talking the other day over breakfast that um, the world economic forum that happens in yeah. davos is now kind of pivoting the way they have the conversations it's not about biz- it's not a business conference Correct. anymore it's more of a spiritual conference now if you listen to them speak even the most profitable business leaders there they're only talking about being empathetic being kind being good to the planet being good to people and companies like sort of a google and all these companies are serious about mindfulness it's not just something funky mm. uh but they're really serious about these topics and so on and so forth how whether all the people in davos are serious about it we don't know mm. they also feel the pressure to sound nice yeah. <laughs> sound good but essentially once you have a certain amount of millions how much more is it going to trigger you it's not really going to then it's just increasing the bank balance yeah then it doesn't really appeal I was amazed about 5 6 years ago economist ran a story and they they have the expertise to speak on the subject they said what really is wealth today the millions are passe the billions will soon be passe if you have time you're rich <laughs> and if you don't have time you're a beggar you could have any amount anywhere but if you don't have time you're you're a beggar so time is the only commodity that's of any value Because it's the most scarce com- commodity. Most That's scarce the only commodity. thing you can't have or hold or yeah. keep. But you can definitely manage it in a way that suits you. But if you are unable to manage your time, then it doesn't matter uh, 
what the bank balance is, but you're a beggar, according to the Economist, which is very beautiful. What three advice would you give to a business owner? Three, you said three? Or what advice? Okay. What three advice? Yeah, three piece of advice that you would give a business owner. Three tips, uh, you know, from your perspective as a teach, as a as a as as a yoga guru because you are my guru and you know uh, you are a yogi and you run a business so you you kind of have earned yeah. the position to give advice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to business owners who how they can learn from and learn from what you share yeah so the first thing is that you have to be really good at your craft which means you have to apprentice for a long enough time till you're good enough to do this on your own otherwise yeah. don't others don't why Why have the stress at a young age of uh, if you're getting a fixed pay salary and you can hone your craft, please stick on. There's a reason why we apprentice. Till then, don't, because you may be good to do this maybe two years later. Don't push it now and then fall out of love with it forever. Mm. So first, you have to be really good at your craft. Secondly, just do what you're passionate and what you enjoy. Don't worry about whether there's a space for it, no space for it. Whatever you do, if you're doing it for your own satisfaction, it'll work. Yeah. If you think that, you know, whoever it may be, any musician, if you think Mick Jagger singing for you, that's not the case. He's singing because he enjoys it. And that's why he's doing it for 50 odd years. Now, you have to just do what you love and enjoy. And there is a market for everything that you love and enjoy. If you try and do things that you think will work, as you know, they never work. And uh, the last thing is that, uh, I mean, I could go on, but the third thing would be that uh, uh, the, the, your voice has to be authentic. Yeah, I think authenticity speaks. Yeah. People your know if you're faking sp- yeah. it. People know if you're faking it. So true. And I really, I mean, I say this, the, I don't know who I was talking to the other day. I said the day I stopped working for money and started working to serve and help, something shifted inside me. And tick, 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 we started signing contracts. Um, it was just the change <coughs> in my own feeling. Correct. Absolutely. And I was vibrating some other kind of frequency or energy that gave more trust to the client, to trust in our business. And Correct. Uh, I think authenticity speaks and it doesn't just apply to business. It applies to everything. Be an authentic person, yeah. an authentic daughter, sister, a friend. Absolutely. So, because the other person, whoever is, even animals can yeah. sense yeah. your Absolutely. fakeness. Yeah. Nobody wants to be played a game on. Yeah. <laughs> But it's such a difficult thing to be authentic because... Uh, no, it's the simplest. It's the simplest thing to be authentic. The Any other thing is difficult because... To be to fake being somebody else, that's difficult. To be yourself is the simplest, most natural thing. But sometimes, so for example, if I'm, um, say I'm hanging around with X type of people, where I have to pretend to be part of them. Sure. I'm not Though, being authentic, but I e- have to. Even if you pretend, they'll know you're faking it. First of all, so yeah. Th- like just I was, an example. I don't uh, even have. No, I'm telling you, genuinely, yeah. right? Uh, like I was telling you in the beginning that Uh, the reason that we were very close, or I've had, I've had students of different, you know, the most beautiful Indian actresses, the most, the richest Indian sort of businessmen, so on and so forth. And the reason that we were friends was simply because uh, I was not trying to impress them. Uh, when somebody is trying to impress somebody, it you, never works. You know it. Mm. So you don't have to fit in, right? Uh, you don't have to fit in at all. In fact. Uh, you can't really fit in any ways. <laughs> you read books? <laughs> so, in fact, uh, I I read very less nowadays simply because, like, I've been reading a book and uh, somebody gave it to me the day before and I thought I'd finish it yesterday, but I was sleepy. I'd like to finish it at one shot, one or two days. So now, after I finish your uh, interview, then I, I am, I'm determined to finish it today. I don't like reading a little bit a day and all of that. Uh, I'll cancel all my classes. I'll cancel everything to ensure that I finish my reading. Acha, <laughs> is, is the book is that good or that's how you are that you want to finish the task? No, the book is that good. I won't even bother. If, What book? What is the name of This is a beautiful book about a person apprenticing with a sort of Himalayan master. It's written by Sri M. It's a subject that I love. So it was so good that 
I ended up reading till night. I woke up in the morning. I was reading. I was reading it in my taxi. I don't uh, like I told. I don't believe in a life of balance. It's all or none. So currently, I am enjoying that book. I will read till I finish. And it's for this reason that I don't uh, read too much because otherwise, I won't do any work. <laughs> 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 What one book would you gift to someone? Typically, generally, I gift uh, uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. Mm-hmm. It's very simple uh, and very one, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, else, I'd gift uh, the Prophet Khalil Gibran. These two books is usually you uh, haven't gifted me any yet. I'll gift. I'll gift you. <laughs> you need to gift me <laughs> one. Gift you. Do you sure. listen to podcasts? A little bit here and there. Little Which bit is your favorite one? Which one I'm, are you listening to? The, I listen to a lot more music, actually, to be very honest. And uh, between prose and poetry, I will always choose poetry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, I mean, I do listen to a little bit of the TED Talks and so on and so forth. But then after a point, you can't take in that much more. Given a choice, it will always be music for me. I'd rather listen to Nusrat or anybody sing where... Uh, learning is sort of overrated, right? Mm-hmm. In the sense that uh, I think unlearning is a lot more useful. I think that's the hard task to unlearn. Yeah. Especially in my line of work, even though we are in it for the people come to us for the knowledge, for real knowledge to come through you have to have space. And that space is constrained if you sort of fill it up with outside knowledge all the time. So that is so well said. Yeah. I want to again sit and think on it. You need space. It's so true. You yeah. need this me time, this alone time, this stillness. Absolutely. Like if you notice, everybody's nowadays talking about stillness, whether it's Eckhart Tolle or right. Ryan Holiday who's written this book called The Stillness is the Key. It's And who's kind of uh, gone behind and seen 100 years, all these politicians and athletic uh, people in at, uh, athletics. Yeah. What... made them who they are it was all stillness the sure. way they achieve stillness were either by walking or going for their swims or whatever sure. different ways so um this creating space creating is so space. important to be creative and innovative absolutely and you have to have a cultivated laziness so in my in my sort of definition meditation is the art of wasting time without guilt if you have the ability to waste time without guilt you're doing very well in life most of the that. time <laughs> Most of the time, people are sort of from a young age, you're trained to be productive, productive, and you can never be creative with that. So just the ability to be lazy, shaukeen, that is, that's the essence. You see a guy who's shaukeen, you know he's a king. Sometimes you see people waiting, you go for a movie, there'll be some people, there, the ability to, and you know that, oh, wow, you want to hang out with this chap or this lady, as the case may be. Yeah. Coming to meditation, there's so many types of meditation. Sure. What, like, um, there's mantra. Like, my vipassana is we, uh, we kind of watch the breath and we go through the body. Right. There's mantra meditation, there's chanting, there's sure. om chanting. Oh, what should one, and there's silent, like, there's nothing, do nothing, just be sure. thoughtless. I don't think you can be thoughtless, though. Yeah, it's not the, brain's no job meditation is asking you to be, be thoughtless. It's be not mindful, not mindless. So uh, all meditations can get classified under four categories. The first one is based on word. You're always talking to yourself. So instead of that, you give some particular words to talk to, right? So it could be a mantra, can be om, can be anything, word. The second kind of meditation is based on visualization. So the right hemisphere works only with images. So rather than it do its own spin, you give it something to visualize. It can be anything, geometric pattern, God's face, whatever it is. The third kind is like the vipassana where you tune into a bodily rhythm. It can be breath, can be heart. And the fourth is the Zen style where you're just watching thoughts pass by. So any of the four you can choose. Any meditation will fit within these four categories. Uh, it, it appeals differently to different people. But essentially the technique at some point you have to drop. Right? The technique is good, 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 good. But you train so much that eventually the technique drops. then what is there in when you do your when you do watching of the breath over a period of 10 minutes you'll get about 10 seconds where everything stops and you know that zoo you've logged in you're in the zone after maybe a few seconds you're back to listening hearing tuck, tuck. that bit was meditative the remainder of the 10 minutes was just the technique to get you in the zone yeah 
but that bit is so beautiful that is space that space in the mind when you experience that on a daily basis you know that you can exist in spite of the story that your mind is telling you on a daily basis i think meditation uh, is getting it's becoming a new business now yeah the other thing that uh, i'm very particular about is that you should not outsource how to connect to yourself to anybody right nobody needs to teach you how to do meditation uh, you can't be so lazy that you tell somebody to tell you how to connect to yourself that's a bit too much uh, you can figure out techniques you can do tuck 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 but you have to have the interest to be able to see how you connect best to yourself don't But outsource that to nobody anybody nobody knows right right people don't know that they don't everybody know how to be knows. still how to be quiet still and quiet is not important somebody likes to sing when he sings he finds himself somebody likes to walk you don't need to learn any new technique somebody has been praying from childhood uh, and now suddenly is being forced to learn some mantra they can do what they were doing from childhood you don't need to learn anything new yeah and there are different kinds of meditation when you have to pick that up the teacher will find you for the simple stuff of just being a little calmer little bit of deep breathing is more than enough you don't need to pay anybody to tell you how to get visions and this and it doesn't make a difference the real chap who is going to teach you that will find you when the student is ready the teacher appears absolutely, absolutely. but interestingly it seems like meditation is becoming a new business it's huge business because it's very profitable right uh, it's one of the only businesses in the world where even if you come back to me if you paid me x amount or you come back to me after one year and you tell me nothing has happened i'll say are beta you've not done enough there's no product mm-hmm. it's highly profitable because there's no product you come back instead of telling me listen your thing doesn't work i have created this aura that i'll say you've not done enough you know so don't bother with all that stuff genuinely when you're ready you will find you'll find it in a book you'll find it here when you're ready or the app whatever it is it'll come to you yeah if you have to sort of if you're trying to sort of thing and all that i would suggest fix the other things in life fix the food fix the sleep fix the exercise fix everything so that the body mind is humming in such a way that meditativeness happens all the time you don't need this is a yogic approach that you start from the basic tak 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 when when hatha yoga is done correctly you won't need anybody to teach you meditation if you are not doing the hard work even 100 people teaching you is not enough <laughs> everything you're saying is something like i want to sit and think about and i love these these silent moments which means uh, it's only in silence that the things get cooked right absolutely <laughs> absolutely any closing thoughts how can people find you uh, sure. what all different things you can offer where should they go for total yoga classes to experience total yoga sequence sure to, sort of to finish off with the fact since it was a business thing i work very hard to remain unprofessional that's my take on subject in terms of finding my work online uh, it, on my website on total yoga total on, yoga.in total yoga.in or total uh, hyphen yoga.org uh, you can find me on social media uh, instagram and facebook and the and the likes or come by for one of my sessions and come by yeah any particular centers in dubai that people can visit you yoga uh, yoga ashram in uh, jlt and the hive in bar dubai those are the two the places, places you are currently and then place. we do a bunch of other stuff as you know yeah. on the boat and I think the best would be to follow you on social media or instagram yeah. or facebook and to see where all you guys are correct heading Absolutely. because you are moving yeah. <laughs> yeah everywhere awesome it was such amazing conversation thank you so thank much you for having me so deep so thoughtful yeah. i think i need a day to just think <laughs> about this maybe i have to hear it a couple of times to sure. and there's so much so many things to learn and so many Absolutely. gems uh, you shared yeah. like some you left us It's so much food for thought. Thank you. Uh to work on. Thank you for your time. Thank Thanks. you for coming. I'm so lucky to Thanks. have you to grab you for this conversation Thanks. while you were visiting in Dubai. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for listening to this conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Can I also do one thing and challenge you to give me an intro now? Yeah. In a sentence. <laughs> I'm curious to know. <laughs> What you said last time was sort of 
<laughs> formal but how would you define how would you sort of introduce me now in a sentence yeah. if you had to wow that's a tough one <laughs> that's, a, that's the test of the interviewee interviewer yeah <laughs> right? uh manish pole is um one he he's uh, my first yoga teacher which i'll always give you that uh, you know he's my first yoga teacher and one of the most um, free spirited business entrepreneur that i have met so far uh who's uh, who's absolutely fearless when it comes to running his business he runs his runs his business in his own style and so much follows his yogic practices reflect in the way he runs his business as well so something like this is Thanks, what that, that's a great compliment for me <laughs> absolutely it reflects like whatever you do you, you yeah. teach is showing in the way you run the company it's absolutely in sync thank you and it just shows even uh, you guys can't feel his his <laughs> presence like it's so calm and so relaxed and just being around him i'm calm and relaxed thank you just how in the yoga class as well i absolutely enjoy it doing the class with you in thank yoga. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you Manish. Thanks. And Peace again up. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you have any questions from Manish, please feel free to ask uh, in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe on the channel whichever channel you're listening from iTunes, Spotify, a uh, Google Play, YouTube. Uh do share the podcast with your friends and family. The more people watch it, the more uh, they would learn. Or maybe you want to tag someone who would learn from this conversation or should or need to hear it. if they're struggling in their company or in their business or finding many challenges in other ways like because i think our conversation was not just about business but everything in life as well i hope you enjoyed the session speak to you or see you in the next episode